Noisy Pixel. What's going on, nerds? Mark here from NoisyPixel.net, back with a new tech video. We love to do these videos, so you know, we're back for another new video. But anyway, we have another headset yet again. Seems like headsets love this channel, but you know, we're not really complaining here. We're just getting it done. But anyway, today we have a brand new HyperX headset on the field. Today we're looking at the HyperX Cloud Stinger 2 Core. Thank you HyperX for sending this headset out. It's always a pleasure working with you guys. Not sure what the core means, and I feel like all these headsets have the same name, like HyperX Cloud, HyperX Stinger, Cloud Stinger, Stinger Cloud. I don't really know which is which anymore. This headset goes for $39.99 as of right now, so pretty cheap budget headset. So if you're on a strict budget, this could be something that could work for your gaming setup if you like HyperX. This is going to be the box here, if you take a look. Kind of just give you a little full rotisserie chicken here. So let's hope it sounds good for the price. Let's get to the unboxing. You're just gonna see one tab at the top, just like this. Flap, 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 flap. First thing we see, something about DTS on the floor. Next thing we see, something about warranty on the floor. Manual on the floor. Now that we got through all of that mumbo jumbo, you can see that we have the headset just nested in a die cut plastic here and it will slide out just like that. And that's that, that's everything in the box. Let's give the grand reveal here. That was loud actually. So let's take this headset out of its nest and just like that, it pops right out. And at the bottom of the plastic, we do have the little windshield boom mic thing whatever you want to call it, plastic on the ground. So in the box as well, we do see a 3.5 millimeter Y splitter that goes from your headphone and mic cable into one. So if you lose this cable, good luck finding it in stores. You're gonna to have to get really particular about finding this online. Keep this guy safe. We're gonna put that to the side for now. And we're gonna get right to the actual headset itself. Holding the Cloud Stinger for the first time feels extremely light and as you would expect it to feel for a $40 unit. I mean, like I'm not holding premium right now. It's almost like a featherweight and very plasticky build, but hey, what are you really looking for at that price? We do have some plastic shields that are fun to take off on each side of the ears. Ooh, not the most satisfying plastic pull I've ever done. It's a shame. And you have another one on the headband here. So here's a quick look of the headset. Now that I take the plastic off, pretty simple look. Boom mic is right here. Seems like we have a flip to mute as you could hear that audible click. This is gonna be a non-removable 3.5 millimeter cable on the headset, which is not my favorite thing. So definitely a budget build there. And then the only buttons or knobs we see on the headset is the volume knob in red once again. And let's throw this on for the first time. So pretty large opening in terms of the uh, head size. So I don't think anyone will have a problem fitting into this headset. Pretty good passive noise canceling. And actually I could barely hear myself right now. So that's pretty nice. So that means we have a pretty good enclosure right here. It's giving me good vibes on the head. Very comfortable, good padding on the top. I don't think it will hurt me after hours of use, but we'll see. But based on the padding, I think this will be a comfortable long duration session use headset. The boom mic is really the same as the last headset we reviewed, so it looks like they use a lot of the same parts or build quality features. Pretty comfortable inside the ears. My ears aren't touching the inside, so there's a lot of space in there. That's good, I have pretty big ears. The headset has some texture to it, like a design, so at least it's not a boring matte black look for the price. Lastly, let's just look at this cable. And pretty good length cable, probably about like six feet, two meters. I would say. And that will connect into your little adapter that they gave you supporting mic and sound. Ironically enough, I actually have a little preamp that supports the separate plugs like this. So I'll probably try and run this into a preamp and then have it plugged directly into the PC. See how that differs the sound quality, if it does at all. So the headset does say PC only on the box. I'm gonna try this in a controller. Um, I don't expect it to work, but it does support the same plug. So we'll, we'll get to that later. All right, I'm just gonna wrap this unboxing up there. We'll get to the rest of the talking points during the review. So thank you for sticking it out this far. My name is Mark Tomati from NoisyPixel.net. Please don't forget to subscribe or like or comment, whatever floats your boat. Any feedback is helpful and we appreciate and read all the comments. Thank you for watching and stick around for the review. You feel the same way I do, don't you? The fact that HyperX came out of nowhere 
they went from 0 to 100% in popularity, and I guess it comes down to it being acquired by HP. Nevertheless, HyperX is a true contender in the peripheral gaming space, offering both budget-friendly and high-end consumer products. We are on a budget-friendly side, featuring one of their newest additions to their headset collection, the HyperX Cloud Stinger 2 Core. This headset is priced at $39.99, a mid to low price range, so I expect a not amazing performance. But maybe, just maybe, it will impress me. Stick around and find out. After you get through the highly underwhelming unboxing experience, we find a Y splitter to adapt the 3.5mm mic and audio jack into two separate jacks. The familiar green and pink for easy PC support. The packaging only lists PC support, but this headset works for all gaming consoles supporting three ring jacks, mic and audio. I'm not sure why they do not state that on the box, as I would imagine it will dramatically impact their sales. Even the product listing on their website isn't as clear as it could be. Anyway, this is a headset review, so back to the Cloud Stinger 2 Core. Our headset today has a pair of 40 millimeter drivers, which are a little bigger than other headsets in this price range. This will help the DTS spatial sound mastering software provided, but we will return to that. Moving on, the non-detachable wire connected to the headset is about 2 meters, and it feels cheap and easily damaged. Be careful catching this wire up against furniture, as it might tear, and you can't replace it. The boom mic is also attached to the headset, having a flip to mute with a distinct mechanical spring clicked when toggled. Like every headset they provide, HyperX has a decently made windshield for your boom mic if you wish to cover it or are a heavy breather. The Cloud Stinger 2 Core screams made of plastic, but what do you intend to receive at this price? The exterior shell is at least thoroughly cared for with a modern pattern design, so it distracts you from the build quality, making for a seemingly more premium product. I respect the move. The headset also has a fine grit texture along with the pattern design, so it doesn't just feel like smooth, crummy plastic to the touch, but rather a bit more tactile. Further, each ear cup holds a shiny metallic-like HyperX logo to spruce up the design a bit more. The inner foam that rests on your head reminds me of those old cheap dad sneakers, as it has the look and feel. But I'm wearing dad shoes on my head, really. The other inner lining of the ear has a leatherette for a mixed look. Next, all moving parts on the Cloud 2 are plastic-based, including the headband adjustments and the master volume knob. Next on the list is that this headset provides you with two years of free DTS. I must say, once I hear the difference, I will not be turning off the automatic audio mastering provided from DTS. The 40mm size of the drivers and the fact that this headset is over the ear helps create a more dynamic soundstage with DTS. Also, plugging this headset into a preamp will improve the output quality and gain because you aren't plugging into a motherboard with average built-in audio. I will refer back to the preamp later. Beginning the performance conversation comes down to the user experience through the DTS app, because there is no support from what I can see for their Cloud Stinger 2 core through HyperX's Ingenuity app. After confirming your code, you could set your performance of sound by selecting between generic over-the-ear or earbuds. DTS also allows you to search for your specific headset. In this case, the Cloud Stinger 2 core appears. I was confused after selecting the Cloud Stinger 2 Core as my device on the DTS app because, in my opinion, the sound quality greatly diminished. It seems it added a crappy bass boost and muffled every mid and high tone available. So I switched to balanced over the ear profile and the headset sounds way brighter and punchy. Going back to the sound quality through a preamp, if you have a preamp that comes with software, you could further enhance your sound by manually mixing your preferred tone. This talking point made me further think that someone buying a headset for $40 probably doesn't have a preamp and does not intend to buy one. The sound quality of the Cloud Stinger 2 Core inputted into a standard gaming motherboard will sound decently less clear than an external amp or aftermarket internal audio card, mainly because the HyperX's Ingenuity software limits capabilities. The most distinct inferences to make would be noticeable clipping on the high-end sharp S-tones and hisses, and overall lack of volume. To summarize the overall sound fidelity outputted on the Cloud Stinger 2 Core is just okay. It's expected sound quality for the cost, but it did impress me a little more through aftermarket boosts. Next on the list is the input boom mic quality. You would think it's subpar, but the boom mic quality is excellent, providing clear vocals with a wide range of tones. The packaging boasts a noise-canceling mic, and to some degree, it is, but you can still dramatically hear yourself breathing on playback. I would say that this mic can easily be used for content creation or even narration, 
Still, the lackluster wind pickup renders the mic challenging to use professionally, regardless of the clean input tone. Kudos on the mic quality, you have to give credit where credit is due. Take a listen to this mic test. Mic test, mic test, mic test, and as you can hear, it actually sounds pretty dang awesome. But you can also hear that my breath still comes through because this mic windshield thing doesn't work. <sighs> I would say this mic is great for content creation. It sounds great, but I don't know. You're going to have a tough time with that wind noise. We are almost finished here, but here are a couple more talking points, starting with one of my biggest peeves on the Cloud Stinger 2 core, and that peeve revolves around the volume knob. Not only is it a cheap feeling, but it moves way too easily. What I mean by that is, and maybe it's only a me problem, is that when I stretch or remove my right shoulder almost at all, I wind up adjusting the volume knob with my broad shoulder. Granted, I have been wearing large hoodie sweatshirts since it's February in New York. I think I have to readjust my volume knob 20 times a day because I shift the volume accidentally. You probably avoid this issue when wearing thinner clothing, but I'm cold, and this minor annoyance irks me on the hour. I never had this issue on any headset, so the placement of this knob and the knob is the only button on the Cloud Stinger 2 core needs rethinking. It could have been literally anywhere else, but what do I know about manufacturing? I'm merely a review nerd. Lastly, the Cloud Stinger 2 core is light and doesn't hurt over prolonged sessions of use. Sometimes I'm on the computer all day and I never experience that annoying headband pain, so game on nerds. After spending enough time listening, gaming, and messing with HyperX's Cloud Stinger 2 core gaming headset, I can say that it's a decent buy. The headset is great as a budget gift for a new or young gamer or someone looking for a bang for their buck. The Cloud Stinger 2 core surprisingly holds some decent value for the mic quality, but can use some help in sound tone, especially considering the demographic for this headset. There is also a lack of features to play with and adjust, and the DTS preset audio for the Cloud Stinger 2 core sounds worse than a default DTS preset. That speaks volumes to me, as this hardware seems a bit thrown into the market. But hey, this headset fills a gap for some. Noisy Pixel gives the HyperX Cloud Stinger 2 core gaming headset a C. Overall, the headset is just okay. With many setbacks not limited to below average sound quality from clipping problems, poor volume knob placement, and general build quality. If the boom mic didn't pick up your breathing upon capturing your voice, I would rate this much higher because you can enhance the sound of this device with aftermarket resources, making it a worthy low price contender. Also, if you can catch an $80 headset on sale for $60, $65, I would save your money sell a few glasses of lemonade, and snag the more expensive unit. $20 makes a big difference in audio quality, at least from my experience. Thank you for watching. Noisy Pixel is a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all of our future content. Also look out for the Noisy Pixel Patreon that we'll be releasing soon. Thank you for your support for all these years, and that's it. See ya, nerds. <laughs> Noisy pixel.